Aging in the Time of COVID-19. This is a presentation of the Division of Geriatrics at St. Louis University and the Missouri Gateway Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program. We will focus on the spread of COVID-19 throughout the world with a particular emphasis on its effects on older people. As many of us know, COVID-19 began in Wuhan, China, most probably from bat soup, and it spread rapidly from there throughout the world. There are three phenotypes of COVID-19, A, B, and C. The C seems to spread more rapidly and it's more lethal. It spread from Wuhan first to Italy and then from Italy throughout Europe and eventually to New York. The phenotype A went first to Santa Clara in California uh, with the first cases occurring in late January and the first death in February the 6th. We became aware of the lethality of COVID-19 amongst older people when there was an outbreak in a nursing home just outside Seattle Washington, in the Washington state. With the COVID-19 pandemic well de developed, we now know that it is worse if people have comorbidity, that is many diseases, and this can be well picked up using the Rockwood Frail Index. We know that older people tend to get more COVID-19 than younger people. This appears to be related predominantly to old people having more com comorbidity, but it can also be related to the fact that older people have an altered immune fun function. Two diseases appear to be particularly associated with COVID-19. These are high blood pressure and diabetes, and people who smoke when they develop COVID-19 have worse outcomes. There is some evidence that African Americans have a higher prevalence of COVID-19 than other uh, ethnic groups. We have been told that this is most probably because of a lower socioeconomic status of many African Americans. But we know that the Prime Minister of the uh, United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, got uh, COVID-19 and clearly he was not of low economic status. It is quite possible that the problem within African Americans is that they have an altered ACE2 receptor gene, which is the gene that basically COVID-19 attaches to. Since the beginning of time, pandemics have spread around the world, killing millions of people. In the 14th century, the Black Death or bubonic plague killed over 200 million people. At the beginning of the 20th century in 1918, 19 and 20, the Spanish flu killed over 50 million people and the HIV AIDS epidemic has killed at least 40 million people at this stage. We're now in the time of COVID-19 and it has killed about 197,000 people as of the 25th of April which is nearly equivalent to the swine flu that are killing over 200,000 around the world. When we compare COVID-19 to the influenza burden, we have to realize that every year, somewhere between 9 million to 49 million people uh, get influenza. Uh, when we look at the worst season for influenza, it was in 2017 to 2018, where 49 million people had influenza. This is compared to the 900,000 so far uh, who have had uh, COVID. When we look at death rates uh, in the 2017-2018, influenza had a 79,000 deaths. At the moment, COVID has killed 46,000 people in the United States. COVID-19 has been shown to have multiple effects throughout the body. Uh, it starts usually with a cough, shortness of breath, and a low oxygen level in the blood. It's also associated with a fever. In many older people, the fever is absent. It can affect directly the liver, causing a hepatitis type picture. It can affect the uh, muscle of the heart with the myocarditis and also produce myocardial infarction. It produces chillblains in the uh, periphery due to a decrease in blood flow to the arteries and deep vein thrombosis. And at the end of, of COVID-19, it often causes severe in kidney injury. Uh, it produces myalgias or muscle pain, as well as muscle wasting leading to cohexia. 
It has been shown to produce inflammation of the colon, a colitis, which can lead to diarrhea. It produces negative effects on the islets of Langenhans and the pancreas, reducing insulin and thus changing people with type 2 diabetes to a type 1 diabetes where they can get diabetic ketoacidosis. It causes anosmia, which is an inability to smell well, as well as anorexia. And within the central nervous system, it causes delirium, encephalitis, and stroke. Perhaps the worst piece of the COVID-19 is when it suddenly produces a large in increase in inflammatory cytokines, such as tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6. This then causes the body to attack itself and is one of the major causes of death in people with COVID-19. There are numerous abnormal laboratory values that are seen in COVID-19. Of the ones that perhaps are most important is the increased D-dimer, because as this arises very quickly, it is a poor prognostic sign. In addition, a number of the changes we see go along with coagulopathy, leading to the stroke, to the peripheral vascular and, uh, uh, disease, uh, deep vein thrombosis, and the myocardial infarction. The diagnosis of COVID-19 is made with PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction. It's about 97% accurate. That means that about 3% of people are negative when they actually have the disease. And mainly, this occurs within the first two days before the COVID-19 has increased the amount in the, uh, the pharynx. The rapid test, which Abbott has developed, is not as good. It has about 15% who have a false positive. Uh, it detects those who are infected, and therefore it is the diagnostic test of choice. Antibodies have been developed, and it turns out that the IgG antibody stays up longer than the IgM antibody. So it is the most useful to see if somebody has had the disease but it only detects those who've had the disease, not those who are necessarily diseased at the time. You see a robot down at the bottom. This has been developed so that people can send the robot in to allow themselves to be isolated when they are taking a history from so somebody with COVID-19. Uh, a major change we've seen in people since the time of COVID-19 is that many pay people are not going to see their doctor with a 29% drop in attendances uh, for doctor's visits, and also people not going to the emergency department because they're afraid of catching COVID-19. Obviously, we are going to have to look down the line to see whether this leads to more severe other diseases as time goes on. On the other side of the, of the other graph here, we can see that basically people in the Seattle nursing home, many of them who were pre-symptomatic had positive cultures, and that meant that they could spread the COVID-19 virus to many other people. Prevention of coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, requires us to wash our hands very carefully try and avoid touching doorknobs and banisters, and most importantly, having social distancing. The six foot apart or two meters apart is absolutely key, as the uh, uh, cartoon says, six feet apart or six feet under. What you can see at the top of the uh, uh, slide is a diagram showing what happened when people went to a restaurant where one person had COVID-19, and that person managed to infect nine other people during a one evening meal. We all need to wear masks when we go outside. Wearing a mask protects others, not those of us who are wearing them. As you can see from the New England Journal article, when you're wearing no mask, droplets travel a fairly long distance, whereas with a mask, you can markedly decrease the distance at which the droplets of coronavirus are liable to travel. Uh, face masks on the whole are okay with a variety of kinds, including the homemade ones, to protect others. If you're a health professional, you need to wear a special mask. These are the N95 masks, and in these, they are carefully fitted to your face, and males cannot have a beard. 
at the bottom, we see a problem that has become very obvious in pe during this period of everyone wearing masks, is that many older people actually lip read, and you need to develop masks which allow the older person to see the uh, uh, person talking to them's lips uh, moving. Before COVID-19 arrived, we were in the middle of a loneliness epidemic where somewhere around 20% of older people were lonely, and this was leading to stress, depression, decreased quality of life, poor sleep, worsening mentation, impaired function, cardiovascular disease, increased hospitalization and nursing home admissions, and increased mortality. With the arrival of COVID-19, we have now socially isolated older people to a large extent, and we have to recognize that this is loneliness is one of the most common pathologies that physicians see. We need to be aware that it's important to use electronic media like phones, FaceTime, uh, Skype, or Zoom, and talk regularly to our older relatives and friends so they don't become socially isolated. With social isolation, there is a large increase in decrease in exercise, which leads to a decrease in function in older people. It is absolutely essential that any older person staying alone at home should get themselves involved in an exercise program. The one that I particularly like is the Vivi Frail program, which is available on the internet as a series of graded exercises for elderly adults. The other thing that is particularly important to recognize is that when older people go into hospital, they have a marked decrease in function, and this decrease in function can basically be corrected by having exercise while people are in hospital, and this is absolutely key. People with dementia are at a special risk when they are socially isolated. We know that they can become more confused, have delirium, fear, helplessness, anger, depression, and denial. If you just think of someone dressed in a PPE coming towards you when you are demented and not thinking well, I think that gives you great insight into how the problems may escalate. It's particularly important when older people go to hospital that they are not physically restrained. This causes not only a decrease in their physical function, but also marked problems with their mental function. Please do not use torture for older people in hospital. And then finally, we have to recognize that older people with dementia lose the concept of social support. Where are their friends? Why can't I be with my family? Who will help me? And most importantly, how do I take my medications? COVID-19 has brought to the fore a number of forms of ageism. Uh, we have heard the term boomer remover, which is a quick way to get rid of those older people who seem no longer useful to us. In Italy, where 23% of the population is 65 or older, some ho hospitals use age-based cut cutoffs to ration ventilators. They say this is distributive justice. Uh, this would not, I think, go down well with Pope Francis, who is clearly a little older than 65. Uh, Many healthy uh, uh, young initially uh, ignored recommendations to socially isolate and to protect their older relatives. Uh, Governor Dan Patrick suggested that older people, including himself, would volunteer to die so Americans don't you lose our whole country. And then we have noticed that the counting of COVID-19 cases has excluded old people in nursing homes under many circumstances. So ageism comes in multiple versions. It can be purely hostile. It can be neglectful. Uh, we don't pay as much attention to the person. It can be, in many cases, benevolent. But nevertheless, as you look around the periphery of this uh, slide, you can see that the youngest person here at 73 is the President of the United States, the Dalai Lama, Pope Francis, and the Queen are all much older and all pay key roles in modern society. Old people are important, and we need not to be ageist at a time of a pandemic. COVID-19 has become a scene mine 
for the world economy, liable to blow it into smithereens. As we know, markets have taken marked in decreases. Uh, people are out of jobs. In the first four weeks, we had six million people in the United States who no longer had jobs. And we have to find ways to support people through the period where they cannot work. But at the same time, we have to make sure that during this period, they are, have enough money to function. We have huge lines for food markets uh, in San Antonio, uh, where 10,000 households were without food and could not afford it. This is a very poor time from the point of view of a world economy. And it is essential that we find a way to solve the problems of COVID-19 quickly so that we can, in fact, get back to a functional economy. While it is hard to find any silver lining in the COVID-19 pandemic, the one that perhaps exists is that coronavirus has killed global pollution. As you can see, the pollution over China has virtually disappeared, and we see the same sort of thing in Los Angeles. And in the United Kingdom, the graph shows the decrease in nitric oxide reading uh, this year compared to the previous year. How did this happen? There was a decrease in factories in China using coal, and in the United States, both gasoline dropped by a 52% usage and jet fuel by 75%, which are huge declines. So yes, we have to recognize as we come out of COVID-19 that global warming will still be a problem and we will need to pay attention to it. As we come to the end of this presentation, I thought it might be useful to reread to you a bit of a poem published first in 1869, and then published again during the 1919 pandemic, and then another poem that is more up to date. Both show there is a future. The people stayed at home and read books and listened, and they t rested, and they did exercises, and made art and play, and learned new ways of being, and stopped listening. History will remember when people fought for their old and their weak, protected the vulnerable by doing nothing at all. History will remember when the virus left and the houses opened and the people came out and hugged and kissed and started again, kinder than before. I would like to thank you all for listening to this presentation from St. Louis University and the our GWEP. Uh, it's been a pleasure to provide this information. I hope it was useful to you. Uh, we should finish on a happy note. So I would like to remind you the storm will pass, the sun will shine again, and most importantly, vaccines will come. Thank you.